I'm Joe Doolin. I head up embedded sales for Canonical. So it's really fantastic to have you guys here. You know, we, we've done a few events at the London office, and I, I think that this is actually the biggest uh, events or one of the biggest events that we had here. So I, I'm really excited to have so many people to come out for our first uh, embedded devices event. So welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the agenda. I don't know if you've uh, seen it or not, but again, I'm Joe Doolin. I head up the devices sales. Tabish, you want to introduce yourself quickly? I work for Joe, and very warm welcome to all of you. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys stay till the end for the cocktails, and uh, obviously take some good, um, good education from the the day today as well. So, so this is an agenda. We have a few guest speakers here. Uh, I'm going to do a quick introduction. We're going to have uh, Gabrielle talking a little bit more about optimizing IoT and the edge. We have uh, also some of our uh, one of our other product managers, Eduardo, here is going to be talking about uh, real-time systems. And then we have uh, some partners that are going to be talking as well. Okado is going to be talking to us, uh, uh, as well as um, Advantech. Uh, and we have uh, Deso and, um, let's see, JC is going to be talking this afternoon. And uh, Michael Croft is going to be talking as well. So we have a few guest speakers. Um, and we have breaks in between. And then we have, um, finally, some drinks in the, in the afternoon. So please stick around. Let me see if I've got this. So this is just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, on site today, we have Ellie, Ben, and Juliana. I don't know if you all want to introduce yourselves. If anybody needs anything at all, please go to them. They're, they're fantastic. Uh, washrooms are outside and to the right. The door's open, so you don't have to worry about the locks today. There's no, we had a fire drill yesterday, so none today, thank goodness. And I know where the stairs are because I went down all six of them yesterday. They're right behind Juliana. There's also some up in the front. Um, so basically, and then the, there's a scan for the Wi-Fi code if anybody needs Wi-Fi. Uh, so again, the overview, uh, we are into the first session. We have a coffee break between 10.30 and 11.00. Uh, we have lunch at 12.30, and we have another coffee break in the afternoon. And finally, we have drinks tonight. So even if you escape to the Christmas market and go shopping during the day, come back and join us for drinks for tonight. So should be uh, should be a good time. Um, so Canonical, to talk a little bit more about us, we were founded in 2004. We're actually over 1,200 employees now in over 70 countries. So we have been growing quite a bit every year. Uh, this is our main office here in London. Um, I want to talk a little bit about being the most popular OS because we're number one in the cloud, we're number one in private cloud, and we're number one in desktop and IoT and at the edge. And why that's important is people like to develop on their desktop and then deploy in the cloud and deploy on the edge. So it makes it a lot easier when you just have one common OS across all of these different platforms. And why this really matters is if you start thinking about AI, because there's a lot of momentum in AI. A lot of people are deploying at the edge. And so if you have the same data tools, the same tools on your workstations, for example, everybody's uh, developing on uh, Ubuntu and workstations for AI. And you have the, sorry, I'm clicking <laughs> too many times. You have the same tools on your cloud, and you have the same tools on the edge. So if you want to do your inferencing on the edge, it's great to have you know, Python, Docker, maybe TensorFlow, all running on the edge, all running those same tools on the cloud, all developing on those same tools on the workstations. So anyway, by having a common set of AI tools running across all of these different platforms in all of these different areas, it just makes it a lot easier for you to uh, deploy AI. Um, and this is an interesting slide. We have a lot of growth um, on Ubuntu and on Linux at the edge. And one of the reasons is actually what I was just talking about. Windows IoT has been declining. If you look, we have a lot of customers that are coming from Android over to Ubuntu. And one of the reasons that they're doing that is because of AI at the edge. They want to do AI on these systems. They want to do inferencing. And it makes it a lot uh, easier to do this on Ubuntu than it is, say, on Android or Windows or other OSs. Um, other obvious reasons why Linux is growing, it's a more secure OS. It's typically less expensive. It's higher performance. Um, 
geopolitical reasons. You know, there's a lot of uh, political back and forth between Europe and China and the U.S. And so Ubuntu is a much more neutral OS. So that's another reason why we're seeing a lot of growth here. Um, so as, as part of the keynote, I wanted to talk about big updates that happened this year and some of the big changes that we see happening on the edge. So one is with our partnerships. We've had a longstanding partnership with Intel. We've been doing optimized images with Intel for a really long time. Um, but some of these partnerships are new. NVIDIA is an older partnership, but what's new with NVIDIA is we're gonna start releasing Orin images uh, next quarter. You can already get a beta now, but now you can get an Orin image that you can support for 10 years, for 12 years even, uh, using Ubuntu. We have a new partnership now with Qualcomm. Uh, we have some early images with Qualcomm. Next quarter, we'll have production images. So again, now you can take Qualcomm Silicon, download Ubuntu, run it for 10 or 12 years, get support from Canonical if you need it. And um, other partnerships we have, MediaTek is uh, an actual a little bit older partnership. Um, AMD Xilinx is another partnership. So what we've done is gone from kind of an Intel only partnership and a little bit with NVIDIA. Now we have five major partnerships. We have joint engineering teams that are working on optimizing these images so that we can support them for 12 years. So this is pretty exciting. Um, some new information, we have a couple of tactical engagements. We've done a lot of custom images for customers with NXP. Uh, next quarter, we're actually going to release a, uh, an image for NXP for our ODM partners that they can also support for 10 or 12 years. So that's a new update um, just recently. And then we have some other tactical engagements with customers, uh, Silicon partners like Renaissance. So I, I hope to announce new I hope to get more partners up in the strategic partnership uh, next year. But I think this makes a really big dis difference, especially as we get into the Cyber Resilience Act and some of the things happening. Um, so that's our partnership. So speaking of Cyber Resilience Act, I don't know if you all are aware of this or not, but October 10th, they did finalize the uh, uh, Cyber Resilience Act. There's still a little bit more details to come out. But it is the case that 20 months from October, you are going to have to uh, submit your plan to meet the Cyber Resilience Act. And three years uh, from October, there actually will be liability if you don't uh, meet the Cyber Resilience Act. And it's, it's quite expensive. It's uh, up to 15 million or 2.5% of your worldwide turnover. Uh, so this is a big deal for European customers. In the past, we've seen a lot where customers will just download an image, ship it, and not update it. And, you know, maybe that's okay in the past. Maybe it wasn't connected at all. But now, if your device is shipping out and you have a network port, you have Wi-Fi on this, uh, the European Union is saying, hey, that could potentially be connected and you need to have a plan for maintaining these devices. So. There's a lot of big changes happening now, and you know, customers need to be thinking about how am I going to update and maintain my devices, because it's five years after your last shipment. So it is a lot of uh, commitment to security long term with the Cyber Resilience Act. And what's new uh, with Canonical, Gabrielle is going to be talking about this a little bit later, but we have a new product called Pro for Devices, and it's a one-time fee that gives you 10 years of updates on our OS. So this aligns quite well with the Cyber Resilience Act and the requirements that you'll have to meet with the Cyber Resilience Act. So we'll be talking more about that. We also have a lot of tools, like Michael's gonna be talking about landscape, one of our tools that you can use to maintain your security on your devices. Um, and th this is also happening in the US on medical devices, like the FDA is also requiring that you maintain the, your devices. So this is a, one of the big things that's happening this year in the devices side, the Cyber Resilience Act. Uh, and then finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about the ODMs that we have. We have uh, 80 Link as one of our ODM partners. So we now have 16 ODM partners in our ODM partner program. And what that means, we have trained these ODMs to do our certification testing so they can self-certify their own motherboards and their own systems to work with Ubuntu, and then they send them to us, and then we will maintain them. We test our uh, certified boards every two weeks against our new kernel to make sure that you always have compatibility. 
And now you can do this work through our ODM partners. So it, it's much faster, it's a lower cost and an easy way for you to maintain your devices. And this is a great way to meet your Cyber Resilience uh, Act requirements is by making sure that your devices are always updated and, and maintained. So that's another big change uh, this year. Uh, so Tavish. Yeah, I wanna talk about a little bit about, you know, what's the, the steps and, and where the real complexity lies when it comes to getting a product out of the door which is focused at edge and IoT. And, and at the very base, of course, is the choice of your hardware. And you really have a lot of choice. You saw all the silicon vendors that, that Joe mentioned we have a relationship with. Uh, but when you actually look at the, the, the complexity, that is actually getting um, all the lower level application OS level stack. You know, how do you secure uh, that system, you know, you may have even different hardware for different regions. You may have different hardware for different stages or, or life cycle uh, of that product. And what we will learn today is, you know, how Canonical and, and, and Ubuntu eliminate some of those complexity that are associated for your uh, IoT and edge deployment. So I'm talking about uh, over-the-air updates. I'm talking about being able to securely deliver patches or upgrades to the OS. I'm talking about integrating new peripherals, new cameras, or anything that, like that that you, know, you may have on your potential edge AI application. So we will learn a lot more about throughout the day today. I also want to take a moment about you know, what does a, a product or, or a customer journey looks like when it comes to getting an IoT and edge product. At, at a very start level, you start with a concept. Um, then your next stage typically is you'd, you'd have a BSP. Uh, may come from silicon vendor, may come from your ODM, uh, and it will generally have a lot of different stuff because that's not really geared for you to go into production. It's geared more to allow you to do a quick prototype or, or, or verify your use case. There will be several different configurations which you will have to go through. Once you've done th those two, three stages, once you know that you're all use case, your edge IoT device, whether it's a vision focused or audio focused or whatever, it's working. Then you have to think about um, what do we do in terms of security? How are we going to make sure that uh, this is maybe compliance with certain regulations that this device is going to fall under? And then finally, you'll have to think about how do we get this mass produced? We want to be able to, uh, obviously, for its entire lifetime, typically that will be more than a few years on, an, on any edge and IoT deployment. How do we ensure for its entire lifetime we can produce this successfully? and obviously maintain that. And if you look at today, there are obviously complex tools available to do this. Uh, you have a very, very painful process for maintenance and security updates and really no standardization around different applications and microservices what you're running today. Now, if I contrast that with you know, what we do with Canonical today, and again, you'll, you'll hopefully get a very good view of uh, what Ubuntu is all about um, throughout the day today is, uh, you start with an image that is optimized for your hardware platform. It's agnostic from different variety of hardware you'd be working with. We've already taken care of the security and the compliance uh, issues for you. And what in eventually translates into is actually your time to market, as well as uh, optimizing the cost over the, the life cycle of that product, anything between 30 to 70%. And we'll, Gabrielle and team here, which you have, rest of the canonical team here, will go through some of these very details hopefully throughout the day today. One thing I want to stress on is, is the long-term maintenance that comes with Canonical. So this is something we are extremely proud of and you know, we are obviously building um, on, on that, something that we started um, with, with Ubuntu many, many years ago. Uh, today, Ubuntu, doesn't matter which flavor of Ubuntu, and hopefully after me, Gabrielle will talk about in detail on, on those two different flavors. Uh, we're able to do two things. Number one, you, you know that the, your next Ubuntu release, the LTS as we call for short, or long-term supported, will be always be in April in even years. So that allows you to plan your CI, CD processes, or even your next generation products around that. And number two, that those release, whatever LTS you decide to go to production with, that's gonna be supported today for 10 plus years. So making sure that as you actually design that product or think about the newer concepts, uh, whether it's AI or whether it's something else, uh, you have uh, an OS and you have a software stack from an OS standpoint that is supported for the entire life cycle of your product. Um, the other th thing I want to talk about is cybersecurity and compliance. This is getting more and more important. We know that there is a, 
uh, most of you here are operating in some sort of a regulated industry and uh, there is a huge opportunity. There's huge opportunity in automotive, healthcare and amongst different things over here. Joe briefly talked about the EU CRA and we have a presentation later on talking about in, in detail. These regulations are really, really hard for, for any organization to comply with. You know, a lot of times, you know, when you're launching a product, this is the last thing you want to think about. But, you know, when you think that, you know, you can't launch your product with certain compliance regulations, it becomes a problem at the very end. So Canonical here today and what we'll hopefully learn today is how we actually make some of that uh, complexities around regulations, around having different certifications go away using Ubuntu as, as an OS over there. And finally, I want to leave it with one, one last thought here, you know, why choose Ubuntu? The whole reason we are here, of course, is to, um, you know, learn about Canonical and learn about what Ubuntu does. So at a very beginning, uh, if you're doing anything with hardware, I think Ubuntu is the, the de facto choice for anything, whether it's training the module, uh, training your models, or whether it's developing uh, your entire use case. Uh, Ubuntu, as an OS today, as I mentioned, can be supported up to 12 years. Uh, it's a silicon agnostic platform, so the complexity in terms of choosing the right silicon, uh, whether that silicon is going to be available in, in you know, the next generation of your product, goes away the moment you actually have uh, an OS that is agnostic from a silicon standpoint. Uh, and last but not the least, it's a production-ready platform. You're able to go to production in a much more efficient, much more faster fashion uh, for whatever edge and IoT use case you would be targeting. I think on that note, I want to hand over to Gabriel, and I think he's going to go and double-click on some of the um, things which Joe and I briefly <coughs> talked about in detail.